I agree with the barn animal comment that it was absurd to see that moment with Marjorie Taylor Greene was about her. She tried to, she's trying to get ink in Jeremy's paper and your paper and my, on my show that she wants attention. That's why, like they, they were already, you know, sort of booing him and they didn't, they didn't, they were showing that they disagreed with what he was saying, a little parliamentary in there. Um, but she, she was looking for our attention. And of course we give it to her. The whole thing gets so tiresome, Jeremy. As if her desire for attention uh, weren't evident from that outfit she was wearing. Well, I mean, well, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it was just like, home. look at me, look at me. <laughs> oh, I, I was listening to your um, your serious colleague, Howard Stern, this morning, and he said she looked like Sharon Stone in Casino. Like, what, what was going on there? Um, she wishes. But, you know, in, in, in all se- yeah, <laughs> in all seriousness, though, um, what that moment demonstrated more than anything else, I think, is the difficulty that Kevin McCarthy is going to have with this conference and corralling his members to to extend um, Charles's barnyard animal analogy there. Um, it really is going to be difficult for him to keep members uh, like uh, Lauren Boebert, Marjorie Taylor Greene and some of these other hecklers um, in line because they, they, they showed last night. Um, that they are about this kind of performative politics, more about that than they are about actual policy. I mean, it, this is it's a politics of performance. Mm-hmm. It's a politics of outrage. Um, and they're quite good at creating spectacles. I mean, there's a reason why Marjorie Taylor Greene was, if not the most prolific fundraiser, or one of the top two or three fundraisers um, in, in the Republican Party last election cycle. Uh, this is this is what a large swath of the Republican base likes to see. They like to see people who are willing to to be irreverent and to, you know, to stick it to the powers that be often in their own party. And and they will be rewarded for challenging not just Joe Biden, but challenging leaders uh, uh, like Kevin McCarthy. I didn't mind, Charles. I mean, you're originally from England. I didn't mind some of the like, no, boo, like a little bit of the crowd reaction. It kind of helped the viewer at home keep tabs on Oh, okay. They're challenging him on on that. That okay, sort of. I'm putting a pin in that to remember the parties are at odds on this, and what Biden's saying is controversial. That that kind of appealed to me, I have to say. But the individual, even like the fact, the way you know it was about Marjorie Taylor Greene that moment. I guess I'll play it so the audience can hear it. Is that she yelled liar, right? It, I could even get on board. Maybe I don't. Probably not. But if she just yelled not true, like that. Okay, she's fired up. She's she's indignant. No, she had to make it personal, an ad hominem attack on the president of the United States while he's doing his duty. Um, And so that's how you know. She went low road. And there was no reason to go low road. The Republicans would be so much better served if they tried to look classy and respectful. And then, and then, heard our friends over the commentary podcast making a very good point in this today, have somebody, I love Sarah Huckabee Sanders, but have somebody take the mic after who can then nimbly and in real time say, this was a lie, this was a lie. Let me tell you what he meant when he was talking about Social Security. He was talking about Rick Scott, senator from the state of Florida, who submitted this proposal to take aim at Social Security and Medicare, which within two seconds of it hitting the printing press uh, was rejected by Mitch McConnell, the guy who's actually in control of the Republican agenda. That's all he's referring to, this guy, right? Like they didn't have that. And so, and in the moment, they just decided to make a spectacle about it. I'll play the I'll play the moment just so the audience who missed it, who was wisely eating dinner like I was, uh, knows what we're talking about. And then I'll give you the floor, Charles. Here it is, Sat one. Instead of making the wealthy pay their fair share, some Republicans, some Republicans want Medicare and Social Security to sunset. I'm not saying it's a majority. <laughs> Let me give you anybody who doubts it, contact my office. I'll give you a copy. I'll give you a copy of the proposal. That means Congress doesn't vote. Well, I'm glad to see you. No, I tell you, I, I enjoy conversion. I'm not saying it's a majority of you. I don't even think it's even a significant. But it's being proposed by individuals. I'm not I'm politely not naming them, but it's being proposed by some of you. Go ahead, Charles, your thoughts. Well, I think this is a structural question. Clearly, President Biden is a habitual liar on almost any topic 
that he can lie about he lies and he did it there the, the guy's a demagogue so i'm not bothered per se by people pushing back but you know, this is not the british parliament and if i go back to where i started we're supposed to have separation of powers in this country we're supposed to have a system in which each branch jealously protects its prerogatives the very fact that we allow the president of the United States to go into the legislative chamber in the first place, I think is a mistake. We don't have a fused system as in Britain. We don't even have an adversarial system. It's entertaining. I grew up watching it, but we have a horseshoe. We're supposed to be more cooperative than that. So the idea that the president would in the first place be put in a position in which he could lecture another branch of government that is run by the opposite party is, I think, absurd and a reason we should get rid of the State of the Union. But if that chamber, if the Speaker of the House of Representatives is going to invite, which he has to, the president to address the chamber, then the members of that chamber should not behave like that. And that doesn't excuse Biden for lying throughout, demagoguing throughout, which he did. But I, I don't like this idea that we need a bit more of this in our politics like the British. The British have a different system than we do. And if you're going to have the president there making his case, then let him do it. One thing about that exchange, Jeremy, was that the booing, the jeering did get him to back off a little. Like, I have to give, give them that point that he then was on his heels and said, oh, well, it's not the majority of you. It's it's not even most of you. And it left the audience, at least me, asking myself, then why are you raising it? If this isn't really a big push by the Republicans, why did you start off with that sweeping sentence, if not just to scare the bejesus out of the old people who he knows votes? Vote. Mm. It was a moment, Megan, that I found kind of odd, like many other in the speech, where the president kind of expressed a lack of, of self-confidence. Uh, you know, he, he would take these kind of self-deprecating shots at himself and his leadership and say, well, you know, I know that, you know, you don't think I'm capable of or you don't think I've done X, Y, or Z. Um, I, I don't know why he chose uh, to back away from that. I mean, look, was that particular line in the speech a little disingenuous? Sure. As you say, it, this is Rick Scott's proposal, um, and it's it's about sunsetting all federal legislation, and that would, of course, include Medicare and Social Security. But the vast majority of Republicans roundly rejected it when it came out. Um, so it, 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 this is the kind of trick that people in both political parties do. I mean, let's not pretend that Biden is the only one that has ever taken a sliver <laughs> of a, a policy white paper uh, a sentence, a clause even, um, of, of of a proposal from the other side and exaggerated it. I mean, this is why a, attack ad makers make millions and millions of dollars. This is, this is unfortunately um, how many important issues in our politics get debated. And, and, and it leaves the public, I think, with a lack of real understanding about what's truly at stake here. Uh, but you know, there were moments in Biden's in his delivery, like we saw in this 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 excerpt, where he's he was a little unsure of himself. And I think that that's probably because he's looking at the same numbers that we are and he's seeing that the vast majority of Americans feel like the country is on the wrong track um, and that many, many Americans, including those in his own party, don't think that he should run again. Look, he doesn't get very high marks at this point in his presidency. That doesn't mean um, that voters dislike him or find him uh, distasteful, but it does mean that they have questions about his leadership and his ability uh, to take the country in the direction that it needs to go if we're going to pull ourselves out of the slump. And that's where Republicans uh, that I talk to um, believe that Kevin McCarthy and and their colleagues should be attacking the Biden administration on. It's on the, the economic conditions, his economic record, uh, because that's what's mattering most to people at home, not these kind of theatrical sideshows where you have uh, Republican members of Congress heckling him uh, from, from the crowd. I've never been able to compost before. It would always seem too complicated, seem too weird, <laughs> but not anymore, thanks to Lomi. Lomi is so cool. It is allowing me to turn our food scraps into dirt. 
With the push of a button, we actually now look forward to clean up after dinner. Lomi's a countertop electric composter that turns scraps into dirt in under four hours. There's no smell when it runs, and it's super quiet. Thanks to Lomi, I have way less garbage each week. Instead, we are turning our food waste into nutrient-rich dirt that I can then feed to my plants. Now, I am composting. I'm a composter now, and you could be one too. And I am creating soil instead of waste, and I feel like a better person. I have a basically limitless supply of dirt from my garden, and I'm having fun after dinner with my kids. If you want to start making a positive environmental impact or just make cleanup after dinner that much fun and easier, Lomi is perfect for you. Head to Lomi.com slash MK, L-O-M-I dot com slash MK. Use the promo code MK to get yourself 50 bucks off your Lomi. $50 off when you head to L-O-M-I dot com slash MK. Use that promo code MK at checkout. Food waste is disgusting and it smells bad. Lomi is your solution. Lomi.com slash MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.